This is FIDE World Cup 2013 coming from Tremso, Norway. Beautiful place. This is a great tournament. Hi folks, John Cordisco back again with another great chess video for you. This is a great game. Great game. This is from round three of the FIDE World Cup 2013. This game was played on Sunday, August 18th, 2013. It's between Tomaszewski, rated 2706 as white. It's crazy that on the lower half of the ratings list, you're over 2700. This is a strong tournament. The uh, top 30 players in the world, 26 of them are there. And the other three top players aren't playing because they've already qualified for the World Championship next year. Against Levon Aronian from Armenia is black. Number two in the world, rated 28-13. One of the very few people to ever break the 2800 mark. Yesterday, game one, Levin lost. You could tell he had a bad cold, but Tomaszewski played a great game. So this is a two-game mini-match. Aronian has to win this game in order to stay in contention in the World Cup. This is a great game. If you don't watch the rest of this, you're really missing out. Tomaszewski is white. Aronian is black. Tomaszewski starts out with d4. Believe it or not, this is going to be a Benoni. Um, I guess Aronian decided to go all out because Benoni is incredibly complicated. If you do the right the right moves, it can be mind mind turning. I'll tell you to try to figure it out. Knight to f6, c4, e6, knight to f3, c5. Here comes the Benoni. Instead of c5, knight to c6, knight to c3, d5, and e3. It ends up being a queen's gambit declined. So we're going to go into Benoni territory. d5, and we're off. E takes, C takes, B take, excuse me, Bishop to D6, Knight to C3, Castles, G3, Bishop to C7. Now, I'm going to give you a little tip. It doesn't ruin the game, but there's going to be a peace sacrifice later in this game. I'm not going to say who did it, and I'm not going to say how it worked out or ruin the game for you. D6. Bishop a5. Now it shows about a two-third of a pawn advantage on my Fritz 13, which is running off screen. I just don't like that bishop there. Of course, I'm not, I don't play the Benoni. I played against it a couple times. I never really liked it. I'll probably, at this point, this is all theory, even with all that pawn on d6 is just sitting down the throat of Black's position. I mean, it looks like it's paralyzing him. Bishop to g2, knight to e4, hitting that pawn. And of course, you can see why knight can't take because of the pin. Castles, now the pin is gone. Knight takes, pawn takes, bishop takes, bishop g5, hitting the queen. Bishop f6, blocking. Queen d5. And I got to say this, Thomas Chesky, he looks probably early 20s. Pretty tall guy, too. Pretty good sized guy. And I'll tell you, some of these players that are coming up, they're just brutal. Knight to a6, what else can he do? This light squared bishop is just sitting there, totally out of action, can't even get in the game. As I saw a game that was being shown by Victor Korchnoy, a uh, world chess legend, and there was a piece that was blocked in, and he picked it up, and he said, listen, my, my bishop wants to play too, you know, and he made it sound like he was a person. It was funny. Rook A to C1. Interesting might have been... Bishop takes, queen takes, knight to e5. 
I mean, look at those pieces right down Black's throat. Oddly enough, the score is, in that case is less than a half a point ahead for White. So we'll say it's even. After Rook A to C1, Rook to B8. Man, this white squared bishop is still blocked in. He had to move the rook so he could move this pawn so his bishop could get out. Now, whether this is all still theory or not, I really don't know. Probably is. Queen f5, b5, e4. Interesting might have been rook f to d1. Just to keep an eye on that d6 pawn that's causing black so much uh, grief. After e4, bishop takes, knight takes. He didn't play queen takes. He wants to keep the queens on the board. He got to remember, well, white only needs a draw to move on since he beat Aronian in game one the day before. I probably would have taken with the queen just to take the queens off to try to get a better chance to draw. But that's why these guys are playing the World Cup, and I'm not. G6. Queen moves back to G4. Still on the same side of the board. Still right on Black's king. Black kicks the knight. Now here's why I want you to pause the video. You're white. You're Tom Vesesky. You're playing Levin Aronian, the number two rated player in the world. You did beat him the first game, so you got a little bit of confidence from that. What are you going to play here as white? What do you do? Where do you put the knight? What he did was he sacrifices the knight. Knight takes 8-7. Now prior to that, the score was a tiny advantage for black. Less than a half a pawn. After that, it jumped to over two points in black's favor. Levin has to take the knight. Now this is Levin Aronian. Now it's dropped down. It's about a, almost a pawn advantage for black. So, let's just take a look at this now. Black shut down. This pawn is shutting down a lot of black's maneuvering. What does white have to bring to the attack? Pawns. His rooks are going to take a while to get in the game. That's a gutsy move by the kid, I'll tell you. Of course, he goes f4. You've got to go all out now. You sacrificed a knight. Not a knight for a pawn. A straight out knight against Levin Oronian. Bishop b7, f5, queen e8. Now the position screams, screams out. For either rook here, to start the advance of the pawns, and to protect that pawn, and f takes. What do you do as white? He pushed the pawn anyway. After f takes, of course we all see why it would have been disaster. I'm just looking at the board here. If queen had taken takes check is pretty bad. The position just falls apart after that. This pawn here is, is, is dropping. This pawn's advancing. This rook, I mean, it's his doomsday. Then that F king to g7, e5 then. He went to e5 first. This put Levin back in the game. Black is up now by over two points. But still, we're not playing computers. Uh, Gary Casper says, you can analyze games after, but the long and the short of it is you're playing games over the board. You've got to make up your mind then. He played bishop takes, king takes. 
F takes. What to do? What do you do? Do you still take again with the pawn? Rook C to E1. Probably the better move. If F had taken, Queen takes, Queen to D7, King to G8, Queen to E7. It's tough for Black right here. But even though he should be able to pull it out. After Rook C to E1, this is where Levon stumbles. And he stumbles pretty bad. He goes, Pawn takes F5. Double question mark. I think he ruined his position there. He had a winning position. In all fairness, I will have to say, Levin Aroni had a call. But what he should have played was knight to b4. Rook to f4. Rook takes. If e takes, rook to e8. Rook takes. Queen checks. King to h8. f6. Rook takes f6. Queen takes check, king to g8, queen to g5, king to f7, and so on and so on to get the general idea. He should have played knight to b4, and after rook to f4, rook takes, giving him a, a decisive advantage. Rook takes f5, here it comes. Rook takes, queen takes. I think it's around here. Now, oddly enough, for whatever it's worth, department, the computer shows us right now this position, even though black is a knight up as dead drawn. And that's what Tomaszewski was talking about, the fact that he thinks he figured out the fact, even if he went wrong and he couldn't win, at least he had a draw by perpetual. And that's all he really needed to move to the next round. After queen g6, queen takes, king to g8, rook to f1, c4. If knight to b4 instead, king to g1, knight to d5, queen takes, rook to d8. Which is not as good for white. After c4, h4. c3, black's pushing his pawn. h5, hitting the queen. What he wants to do, he wants to deflect the queen. Queen e4 check. The queen had taken h5. Queen e6 check. King to g7. Queen to f6 check, king to g8, rook to f7, queen takes, queen takes, with an overwhelming advantage for white. King to h3, king to h8, queen to e6. Knight to c5, he finally gets that knight into play. Finally, but it's unfortunately too little, too late. Queen to f6 check. King to h7. Now, Tomaszewski knows at this point he has the draw in hand. And, of course, drawing, he moves on to the next round. And 11 Aronian, the number one seed in this tournament, by the way, because Magnus Carlsen is playing this fall for the world championship against current world champion Vichy Anand. So he is the top seed in this tournament. Queen f7 check, king to h8. Queen f6 check, king to h7. Queen e7 check. Looks like here he might have a mating net, but no. King to h8 and queen f6 check. And that draws the game by threefold repetition. Levin didn't have to resign. He's a pretty good natured guy. But I'm sure inside he is heartbroken. 
when you're the number one seed and you lose two games, in, excuse me, not two games in a row, but for all intents and purposes, two games in a row, and you're eliminated from the World Cup and his chance to be, again, in the cycle for the World Championship, it's got to break your heart. He tried really hard in the candidates' final last year, won by Magnus Carlsen over tie breaks over Vladimir Kramnik, former world champion. I think Eleven is a world-class player. He's a really interesting, nice guy, and it's a shame that it didn't work out for him, but he'll be back. These world-class players always do. They have to find a way to come back. Anyway, folks, that's the video. I hope you enjoyed it. I remember watching the game live, and, you know, it's funny. I was really rooting for the Tom Chesky kid, but at the same time, I really like Levin a lot from all his interviews and everything else. And it's the way it is. Somebody has to win and somebody has to go home. Anyway, I want you all to remember that if you think chess is just a game, you're not playing it right. And I hope everyone comments. And I please want to thank the, a lot of people lately that have subscribed. I personally appreciate it. And those of others that haven't, please do. I would appreciate it. Take care, folks. Bye-bye.